NK, LGL, leukemia is another rare disease. It used to be under the umbrella of T or NK, LGLL. The upcoming novel WHO classification will probably has it, have it in more separate, uh, as a separate entity, taking it out of this basket of LGLLs, calling it chronic lymphoproliferative disease NK, CLPD NK. And it has a unique molecular signature. Up until recently, people knew that it carries STAT3 gene mutations, hyperactivating ones, in about one-third to 40% of cases. Two papers published in Blood in 2021 showed that there's a significant proportion of these cases that carries TET2 deactivating or inactivating mutations making up, because they are mutually exclusive with the STAT3 mutations, making up another 30% of cases. What they all have in common is a strong YAK-STAT signature as a NK cell that is activated via cytokines or these hyperactivating mutations in STAT or due to the epigenetic modifications that are a result of the TET2 inactivating mutations. Overall, high YAK-STAT signature, that's probably one way to target this disease. And what people also found out is the fact that the STAT mutated ones versus the TET2 mutated ones seem to be a bit different clinically in the way they present themselves in terms of cytopenia or autoimmune symptoms. Also a disease where we now have made progress biologically, we understand it better. Now the next tasks are how are we going to improve our treatments, which so far are pretty much immunosuppressing agents of the classical type.